Welcome to Locally Sourced. I'm Armanda Famoletti. Hundreds of children in the Hudson Valley are waiting to be placed in foster care. Today, my guests know all about foster care. They come from a wonderful organization that helps parents and children, and I'd like to introduce them. Welcome, Allison, Krista, and Leilani. So Allison, tell me about your organization. How old is it? What does it do? And what do you do there? Sure. Uh, Berkshire Farm is a child welfare agency. Um, we're actually spread across New York State. It's over 131 years old. It was actually started by a man and his wife out in Canaan, New York. Um, they were reaching out to help troubled youth in need back in 1886. Um, if you fast forward to present time, Berkshire has grown immensely. Uh, we now have a variety of programs, such as foster care, preventive services, detention centers. We also have a residential treatment center, um, as well as group homes and a, a school district. How many children do you help a year? Um, what was, I believe since 2014 we've helped over 5,000 children. Wow, okay. And what do you do there? I'm actually the program coordinator for the foster care program in uh, Putnam and Westchester County. Okay, and, and how much uh, activity is there in Putnam and Westchester County for uh, foster care? Um, between the two counties there's actually over 500 kids in care. Um, there are a lot of teenagers that are in need of foster homes. Um, so we're actively mm -hmm. searching for foster parents to give a warm, a warm, loving home to those children. Okay, but you're actually not as active in Putnam and Westchester as you are in northern parts of the state, right? Are you moving down into, can you talk about yes. that? Um, we, like I said, we're, uh, we're statewide. We've recently branched out into the Putnam and Westchester area because there is a higher need um, and there are over 500 kids in care mm -hmm. between the two counties. So we're looking for, for foster parents to provide. Right, so I care. guess, um, I mean, part of the reason that I wanted to have you folks on the show was because uh, I want to introduce you to Westchester and Putnam. And because I, I didn't know your name when I first heard it, Berkshire Farms and the social, what, your whole name, well, it's a long name, what is it? Berkshire Farms Center and Services for Youth. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is long. Glad you said it's that. Very <laughs> and not me. Um, so, <laughs> Can you explain how foster care works? Um. Sure. Um, so usually what happens is a court would deem that a child has been... The court. Yes. So something has happened before the court. What's, yep. What's happened before? Um, usually preventive services, CPS is involved. And these are state agencies or government agencies? The, the local department of social services. Okay. So usually so the So we have a local... Westchester and Putnam has the social services agency that's funded by taxpayers or how, who, who is who are they um i believe so do you guys know yes there's um local department of social services it's funded usually um they get federal money state money um and then i'm sure local taxes okay. as well so it isn't a private nonprofit. we're still talking about government at this yes. point okay i'm sorry to interrupt yeah. and then something happens what happens next um so a court would after okay. preventive services. <laughs> Before we get to court. Before we get to court, there are preventive <clears throat> services. Um, CPS, Child Protective Services, does so get involved. So someone is, is someone right at the beginning, maybe a neighbor, friend. I was going to say, sure. if you want to start at the very yeah. beginning. I want to start at the beginning. All right. A call is made to the state central register. <laughs> Thank you. To say <laughs> something's not right here. And, and that okay. call could be made by a physician, by a neighbor, a by teacher. a friend. Yep. A teacher, absolutely. Um, and so that call goes to the state. The state puts that out to whatever the county is, where that child resides, um, and then an investigation occurs. And that's when CPS okay. comes in. Okay, and then someone goes to court. <laughs> what, what, what court is this? Family court? Or? Yes, family okay. court. Yeah. See, I know nothing about this, but I'm gonna guess that a lot of people watching may not know yeah. anything about this as that's well. That's probably true. Okay. So, so the investigation occurs, and if the department feels that they have enough evidence to say, listen, you know, this child isn't safe here, okay. They that's base, That's the bottom line. The child is, is not, not safe, safe mm -hmm. in the home that Earth. they're in presently. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. No, and they so they go to court and leave it up to a judge to say this child needs to be placed into foster care or okay. if there's some other plan that they can make for that child. And that's when we step in. We get okay. the phone call saying, "Hey, we are going to court this afternoon for this child. This is the child's name. This is the child's age. This is what the needs are. Do you have a foster home for this child?" 
Mm -hmm. um, and that's when we have to, you know, scramble and see, like, do we have a home that could meet this particular child's needs? Right, and this happens on a daily basis many times yeah. a day? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, or? throughout the state for sure, many times a day, but yeah, okay. absolutely. And so the, the court is calling you and other organizations yeah. that do similar work, right? So, mm -hmm. and then yeah, somehow it's all managed that a, a home is found for yeah. this this child or the or siblings. or sometimes it's not found. So when we don't have a home, or when the county doesn't have a home to meet this particular teen's needs or preteen's needs, that's when they could end up in kind of like a um, a group facility or some kind of home, bigger home, waiting. More like a, a kind of an orphanage kind yeah, of? Yeah, we don't use those terms, but yeah, right. like a group I'm facility. old, yeah. so. <laughs> I didn't say yeah to that. <laughs> Just to get the picture in my mind that, that it's sort of a, a, a place uh, where there are many other children. Right. And, and they're staff, not parents. Right. And right. staff, and people who aren't giving them the kind of love and care and help that uh, foster parents right. would, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so actually you were kind enough to bring a video um, and uh, I think you're, you're kind of the star of the video, right? I don't know Krista? about the star, but <laughs> I, I do appear in the video. Well, I think you are. I think this is stardom for you. But it's a great <laughs> video, and it does kind of at least explain um, the foster care experience, not the experience of the child before they reach foster care, but once they're placed in a foster care home. So um, we're going to bring that video up. Here it comes. We foster for a number of reasons, and I think that I don't really get that particular question, you know, why do we do it? Because people see ultimately why we do it, because they see the kids happy, and they see the relationships that the children uh, forge with their own children. Reverse back to Jack. Yay! In the beginning, we felt that we wanted to give back to the community. We agreed early on in our marriage we thought about fostering and possible adoption. Are you ready to actually read it to the class? Are you going to try to ask them to volunteer? A lot of times people are surprised when we say that we're foster parents. I think people have this impression of foster parents from the news or the media that maybe isn't so positive. And so I think that we are the face of a lot of different families in foster care. There are lots of people like us that really you know, look like your everyday people, and there's nothing extra special about us, and there's nothing that most people can't handle. Sadly, there's never enough foster homes for children. We are called almost every single day asking us to place children. Kids come into care for a variety of reasons, and honestly, different families have different strengths. So we have several different options for foster parents. They can do long-term care, short-term care, and really what it means is they can come on full-time and say they want to take placements of children that will be with them from two weeks to forever because they've been freed for adoption. Or they can just come on and say, you know what, I can only do this when I can do it. So maybe one weekend a month they're available. And we definitely have foster parents that that's the way they're able to participate with us. There was a lot of opportunity to talk with Berkshire prior to even getting involved in the classes that you take. So we were able to have somebody from Berkshire come into our home, sit down with us, answer all of our questions, and then we decided to make the next step to take the class. Our foster care program at Berkshire really helps to support our parents with offering them monthly trainings. We offer them a bi-monthly support group out of my office, and I know several other offices across the state offer that as well. We're there for them whenever they need something. For us, Berkshire definitely stands above the others, and I would say for a couple of reasons. The first is that they are really dedicated to finding the right child or children for your family. The second, you really feel the support of the agency throughout the process. So from the time the child's placed to the ongoing contact, etc., they really support you 100%. There's an abundance of questions and it's okay. It's the only way you're going to be able to foster is that you get those questions answered now. 
to make that decision if this is for you or not. And you're not alone. Everybody wants to know how it works. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, when I retire or when this happens, I want to start fostering. And I'm like, no, start fostering now. You know, just do it now. Get involved. You know, ultimately it's easy for us. Once you say yes and start the process, it becomes easier and easier every day. Working with foster children gives you so much. Sometimes it's difficult and sometimes you learn a lot of life lessons. It changes everything. I mean, it is why you do it and why you continue. Because when you do go through you know, having to transition with a child that is leaving your home and you think, I can't do this. You can do this because it really comes back to how unbelievable the experience was while they were there and how much you feel like you may have had an impact on them and you want to do it again. There are a lot more people that could be doing it that are just like us or even better than us maybe. We certainly are trying to grow as parents every day, but we're not perfect and the only difference is, you know, we signed up to do it and other people could do it too. That was terrific and I think it really explained a lot about um, what the experience is for parents and children. But one of the things I noticed is that they all, oh, those parents look rich to me. So uh, their houses are gorgeous and um, is there an income level or something like that that foster parents have to achieve before they can have children in their home? We want to make sure that you can meet your own needs before you're caring for children in care. So there's no income level. You need to have a job and you need to make sure that financially you can pay all of your bills and your obligations. Um, but but we, you don't have to have granite countertops. No. no. Okay. We joked when I started fostering, I was the little <laughs> lady that lived in the shoe because I lived in, it's my first home. I was 21, very small. And I fostered a lot of children, wow. and so I kind of laugh at that now, like looking back, like, so no, there's definitely, your house does not need to look like a certain way at all. <laughs> so Lilani, you were 21. Yes. Right, you're barely out of, you know, over 18. So um, you can be that young and single, right, yep. I assume, yep. and still be able to, to be a foster parent. That's, a, that's pretty uh, surprising to me. Yeah, you... Um, at that point, at 21, it was almost easier, actually, because I had, like, a lot of energy and time to, you know, to devote to them. And, um, you had and a was, job, though. You were fiscally stable, Yep, right? and I was freshly out of school, so I just learned a lot about early childhood. I was uh, ready Were you a to teacher, go. a social worker? Uh, early childhood, so preschool education I was going for. How old yeah. were the kids you uh, fostered? Um, I fostered from babies to up through teenagers. Wow. Um, so, okay. Yeah. All right. So you don't have to be wealthy. You just have to uh, be stay, pay your bills and be able to support these kids. But you do get a stipend from the state or something like that. You know, could, would someone like to explain how that works? Yeah, you get um, a monthly stipend that kind of assists with room and board, um, clothing purchases. It's, and where is the stipend coming from? It comes, it's filtered through DSS, and again, they're DSS, using all those, uh, sorry. Department of Social Services. Okay. Um, and again, it's filtered through those federal grants, the state funds, and the, the local funding. Um, and Berkshire, your, your, your actual check comes from Berkshire directly. Um, About how much is it per child, per age? How do they calculate? It goes by age, um, by number of days they're in your home. So I generally say it's like $500 a month. It varies depending on what part of the state you're in. Um, technically, it's actually more than $500 a month, but I always say to foster new people that I'm talking to, if I tell you it's $500 and you get $650, <laughs> you're super excited. Okay, so the minimum is $500 right. a month per, per child. And it also goes by their needs. So if you have a child with higher needs, there's, there's other things that can factor Right, if they that. have a health issue or something mm -hmm. like that, they need to go to the doctor more often or whatever. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit about the typical child. Who is the typical foster care child? Is there one? I don't think there is a typical child. I mean, I've seen childs ranging from, you know, zero years old until the age of 20 um, in my work at mm -hmm. Berkshire. But there's no typical child. I mean, you'll see a variety of kids come into care. And are they all, you know, from the same socioeconomic background or do they come in from every kind of background? I would say every kind I of background. I would say every kind of background. It can 
this kind of thing can happen to anybody right. at any time. This, this, this is, has nothing to do with party affiliation <laughs> no. or uh, financial means. Um, kids can be in an unsafe home wherever Things that happen. is. You know, maybe somebody got sick and there's no other resources. Um, there's there's all different all different scenarios as to why kids come into okay. care. So I, I think as the person who doesn't know anything, the scenario I think of the most is an abusive situation mm -hmm. or the parents are on drugs and they can't care for the child. Is that more typical or less typical? Is that that's my stereotype of the family that the foster I, child I is coming from? I would say drug and like substance abuse right now is probably more typical. Um, that's what we're seeing is that these families need to get help and they need to get services in place to get clean um, more so than I would say abuse. Like a typical what you see in your head, like oh these children are. I think it's more neglect and more due to. Um, Substance, abuse. substance abuse. Substance abuse. So yeah. that's a big issue mm -hmm. right now. And that just shows what the opioid crisis, yeah. how it spreads and affects so many different parts of our society that people don't necessarily maybe think about when they think about opioid abuse. You brought me some uh, photos mm -hmm. of some of your uh, kids and what happens at Berkshire. So we're going to bring those photos up on the screen. And as you see them, can you tell me what's happening? Um, that is one of our families during adoption. Um, so that is a little little girl getting adopted, and typically the judges will give them like a teddy bear or something at their adoption day. So yeah. So you go to court and you get adopted right there in court, and your family comes and takes you, your new family well, takes they, you home. That's how it works. Well, they've been fostered for quite probably quite a long time before. Um, well, she's just a little three year old or something. She's probably been in foster care either since birth or since she was a year old. Yeah, well. and and then yeah. Um, that is another way we uh, people help our agency if they can't foster. That's during the holidays. We do holiday drives um, for gifts for kids in care. So those are some children enjoying um, some donated items to them. Um, that's actually my family. Um, that's my husband and my daughter who's almost 13 who we adopted when she was three. Um, that is my son's adoption. He's in the middle in the blue. Um, he was six then. Um, and that's me and my baby, Evie. Um, is that your baby or you, you adopted? Nope, that? that's, that's my biological baby, yeah. Wow, so is that how big your family's going to be? Are you thinking about uh, I think growing it even more? Well, I don't know if we want to announce such things on TV, but eventually, no, I'm not right now, no. <laughs> no, I'm not, like, we're thinking about kids eventually, yes. Look at her, she's... <laughs> Um, and I, we do plan on fostering and adopting more. I think I'm really thinking about fostering um, actually some older children right now because our hands are full with little ones. <laughs> so that, and you, you told me earlier that you made, you had those little shirts made so that your new son would feel like he was going to be the big brother to his, his new baby sister. And had you fostered that little boy before you adopted him? For yeah. We fostered him for a year. He had bounced around quite a bit because um, he was a little naughty. Um, um. <laughs> and had some behavioral issues. Um, but once he got into a stable, structured environment and you know, knew he wasn't going anywhere, he kind of you know, toned it down a bit. So, so he's now he's well. the perfect child because you're his mom? No kid's perfect. <laughs> no kid's perfect, but we, we, we get through our come on, Come on now. Yeah. Well. Okay. So actually what you said something um, about he, he was a, a little boy and he was bouncing around. So is there an age, I mean, I would think that teenagers were the hardest to foster because maybe they've done a lot of bouncing around. And we all know, well, I, we don't all know, I'm not a mother, but I've heard from my friends who are that teen years can be especially uh, stressful for parents. So tell me about the teens. Or what what would I've you say about teens? I've several teens in my home, actually several all at one time. Um, I found the teens to be probably the most rewarding kids to foster. And we're talking about what ages? Um, they were 17, 18, and 20. That's not a teen. Yeah. But they, they can still be fostered? They can stay in I've, care until they're 21. Oh, okay. See, again, I thought they had to be out by 18, but they can mm -hmm. stay till 21. They can to stay into care. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Okay. And it just, you get to have those conversations. You get to have, like, real life experiences with them they get to experience things through almost a child's eyes because it's things maybe they've never been exposed to before. And so it was really, I really enjoyed having the teenagers in my home. 
Okay, so that's maybe a perception that isn't true. And there are a lot of teens who are looking for homes, right? More than little cute little children. A right? lot of people come to us and say, oh yeah, we want to we wanna foster, we want to potentially adopt, and, and they're looking for the younger children, the kids under age eight, which is great because those kids needs home, need, need homes as well. Right. However, the teenagers, a lot of people don't come up <laughs> and say, oh, well, we're looking for, you know, a 14-year-old when those kids need a home just as much, right. if not more. So if they're not in a foster <laughs> home and they're not in their real homes or their original homes, where are they? They're in a group home with staff. Okay, and that is not the optimal, you would say? It's Think about all of the um, special occasions in your life. Your birthday, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Right. Something really exciting happens. You get an award at school. Right. Who's your You're resource? In the school Who play. do you call? Right. Who's coming to watch you? Um, especially if these are youth who are unable to return home to their birth family. They're sitting there and they have, they have staff instead of having wow. parents. Okay, and so that I'm sure the staff are caring. Absolutely, but it's, but it's not the people. same. But and it's, it's not different the same. people, right? Okay. Because staff come and go, right. so they don't have that foundation that they would have if they had parents, and when, and when even if they out. just have one parent, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when they turn, you know, past 18, 19, 20, I think about my relationship with my parents. You know, I call them for everything. So kids need parenting past 18, 19, 20. Oh, sure. So if we can hook them up with an adult in their lives who doesn't necessarily have to adopt them, but is going to foster them and is going to be a resource so they have somebody to come home to on Christmas and invite to their graduation or whatever they're doing, then that you know can be a lifelong relationship and might be their only connection left or relationship. Wow, wow. So uh, a child, like you said, they can opt in to stay with their foster parents until they're 21. Um, and But the foster parents aren't forced to say, oh, 21, see you later. Right? I mean, they, like you're saying, they can continue that kind of a almost parental or mentorship uh, re relationship with that person forever if they want. Absolutely. I would say so, one of my children, she aged out while she was still living with me, and she was able to just stay with me. Like, I, there was no, okay. she didn't have to leave just because she turned 21. It just right. meant that the state was no longer coming in, like DSS or, or Berkshire, the workers are no okay. longer so coming in. So that's to actually visit her. what it means to age out. Right. right. Okay, I see. That's terrific. Thank you for that. Thanks. How many children have you fostered? Uh, over 30. Over some 30. Some were for a night. Some, I've adopted two, so. That's terrific. Some were forever. And how many have you fostered since you were 21? Now you're 22 now, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I have fostered over 30 as well, but growing up we had, um, my mom was a foster mom, so I just, okay. foster care is like life. It's part of your forever. life. Yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. We only have like five minutes left, but as a a sibling kind of of a foster child what's that experience like crazy um, no it's all <laughs> it's all good um, people always ask all the time how is it going to affect my kid and I say I'm okay I turned out okay I think um, I think it just makes you be a little bit more uh, have empathy and compassion for others and obviously led me to work in this field um, but I think it was fun you know I have I still keep in touch with a lot of my um, people that didn't my mom didn't adopt so my foster care siblings that went home or moved mm -hmm. on um, but yeah. So, so you'd say it's a good experience for other children in the home to have foster care kids in the Absolutely. house, right? Absolutely. So, and it may, is that a little better for the foster child to have siblings, or how does that work? Is it, it doesn't matter one way or the other, they're, they're with other kids one way or the other, and that's always more fun than just being by yourself, right? Yeah, I think one way or the other. I think what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it depends, on, it depends it, on the child, Right. Too. Every kid is an individual, mm -hmm. and uh, just like we all are. So you, Berkshire matches what you think is the best child with the best foster volunteers, right, or, or people, right. okay? Sure. And, and there was, uh, in that video, there was some training mentioned how much you know you're not just on your own you're given a child you don't know what to do if you've never been a parent there's training right uh, we offer offer um, like a pre-service class and so it's about 12 weeks uh, we don't teach people how to be a parent because we figure you, you know something about children when you come to us but we <laughs> show you something <laughs> something um, but we show you what it's like to work with birth families uh, what kind of behaviors you're going to see how you know what things you can do to help work through those behaviors mm -hmm. um, what we expect of you what you expect of us you know I have so many other questions and we're running out of time <laughs> but I just want to say you have a great website 
we've we've shown it several times I'm sure um, on the screen and phone numbers so if people out there are interested in getting more information no commitment just find out more go to your website you've got more great videos like the one we just saw they can call you they can find out more I'm sure you have lots of information so I that would be the first place to start maybe if you're interested in foster care and you live in Putnam and Westchester absolutely yeah. Okay, terrific. And there are, you don't have to be a foster parent. You can be a weekend get host, right? Yeah, yeah. What, what still, did you call that program? We call it the respite program. Um, and it's short term. We still have all the same prerequisites. So you're still going to go through the same training. You're going to do all of those things. Um, but you don't have to commit long term. You can do a little, okay. a short little commitment overnight, weekends, things like that. And people don't just have to go to your website or phone. They're going to be able to meet you in person. We have a slide of the different places you're going to be this spring and summer. There it is. Um, so what are they, that you're going to be manning a booth? Tell me a little bit about these uh, particular occasions. Um, so at these different um, events, we end up having a booth, um, and we have all our information available there as well in print, um, but also our home finders, like myself and Hannah, are available to speak to and get questions answered in person. Um, and then we can get you along your way to all the right steps in order to see if you're ready to you know, take, this, take this ride with us being a foster parent. Okay, and I just wanted to say thanks to Hannah Lloyd because she was the person who found me, who introduced me to Berkshire, and I, I thank her for that and for all the work she's done for us to get together today and talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, so again, thank you so much. We're, we're just about out of time. Is there anything you just want to make sure that you say before we stop taping because you think it's the most important thing that people know about Berkshire Farm Center and foster care? Yes just to like let us know like don't believe the myths let us let us go ahead and tell you what Berkshire can do um, let us answer all your questions and, okay because yeah. I think there is because of television and yeah. such there's a lot of misconception about foster care and and people might feel in their heart they want to do it but it seems like it may be too hard right, right. or right. too scary um, so just find out more if it's something you're interested in contact Berkshire Farm Center and um, go forward and thanks so much. Thank thanks you. very much, Allison. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Thanks, Thank you. Tina. Thank Thanks, you. Milani. <laughs>